What's going on guys? So today we are out here at Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Corpus Christi, Texas, and we're gonna take a look at a relatively new brand. This is the East to West brand. Now, you may have noticed this brand at an event I was at up in Elkhart, Indiana during the dealer show a year ago, and this was a relatively new brand. They actually did the entire Forest River event at the East West plant facility in Elkhart. And it's, again, relatively new to the market. It is a little bit traditional in terms of their floor plans and styling, but we're gonna walk through one today to give you kind of an idea of what it's all about. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, before we kick this off, let's take a look at the numbers on this Alta unit from East West. This unit has a gross vehicle weight rating, relatively heavy at 9,597 pounds. It has a cargo capacity of 2,212 pounds, rides on 15 inch D-rated tires, 4,400 pound axles, 8,800 pound total axle capacity. Taking a step back, you can see up front it has a power tongue jack, dual 25 pound propane cans. It can support two batteries up front in this area here. You would have to get a dual battery case for it though because the cases are a little bulky on the side and it might prevent you from fitting both of them there. Coming around this way, you can see you have your extend and retract feature here for both your front and rear stabilizers. It's kind of cool that they put them here next to each other. Oftentimes there's one in the front and one in the back and I kind of like it like this. You have one back there and then you have one right under here. You have your freshwater low point drain here as well. You can see this unit actually has a drop frame also. It rides on an eight inch S style channel with a section that drops beneath it and that's gonna be for your front pass through storage here. This is very cool because this is very fifth wheel style in terms of putting your wet bay right here in your storage area. Plus you can see it has a very tall pass through storage courtesy of that drop frame section and very thick baggage doors with slam latches. That is very, very nice. Not a lot of travel trailers get that. Oftentimes it'll have just a little twist lock. Back your furnace, your water heater, you have your black tank flush connection right here. I love the fact that they're putting a light on this side. I have been saying that manufacturers need to do that forever. Illuminate this side. If you have to come out here and do anything, especially with your sewer connections, you're often doing it in the dark and it's very difficult to see what's going on out here without a flashlight or a headlight. Under here, you can see it has a rack and pinion slide system. Coming around does not have an upgraded equalizer. It is running Castle Rock ST tires. I'd likely recommend upgrading your tires after a few thousand miles. Stepping around further to the back. So you also have your leveling system controls back here. So they redundantly give them to you in the front and the back, which is very cool. Now this unit is a little bit dirty. It's recently arrived, so they haven't had a chance to run this thing through PDI yet. 50 amp connection here. So you're likely gonna have two air conditioning units or it'll be wired for a second air conditioning unit. Rear bumper with your spare tire on the back bumper. You have a full walk on roof. And even though these look like incandescent style lights, they're actually LED. You can see the circuit board right behind the covering right there. And it does have LED lights up top as well. And it's also wired for a Furion wireless backup camera. You can see the nice size awning that extends from here all the way to the front up there, or at least right to there. And then you have outside marine style speakers. This unit does have an outside kitchen. No sink, but it does have a cooktop and a small micro refrigerator. And again, thick baggage doors with a slam latch. You have power and cable connections out here as well if you wanna move small TV out here so you can watch TV while you're cooking. This unit does have the Moride step above flip out steps. Let's take a look at the storage area up here real quick. Again, very, very nice pass-through storage. It's probably about two feet wide, about two and a half feet tall. And then it passes all the way through except for that little cut out there for your wet panel on the other side. Something that's really cool about these east-west units is that they actually have a small solar panel already installed on top. So very nice system in terms of being able to maintain the battery and be able to run something like a small 12 volt refrigerator that you're starting to see becoming more popular in these units. All right, let's step inside 
of this East to West Alta, and this unit is the 2810 KIK. Another really nice feature right there, Asdell. This unit uses Asdell composite panels for the sidewall. If you haven't watched my channel before, Asdell is a composite panel that this fiberglass is laminated to. Basically, you don't have to worry about delamination when you use Asdell. Also, nice friction hinge door. Very effective one too. This probably is the most friction I've seen in a friction hinge door in a long time. Okay, stepping inside. This is a mid-living room rear kitchen model. Let me pan around so you can take a quick look at the floor plan. Has a televator right here. Relatively small TV, but I think for the size of trailer this is, it's appropriate. You have a small fireplace beneath it. Lots of countertop space. And what I like over here is that they've actually incorporated a desk. No drawers, it would have been nice to maybe have a top drawer right here and maybe one for files down here, but this is a really nice space. USB charging right there plus a 110 outlet. You have some nice deep cabinets up top. Very nice. This is the new faucet that is becoming more and more popular in units. And it is real residential too, it's not plastic. You have a full dinette, freestanding with four chairs. I always like it when the chairs are already out. In some of your higher end fifth wheels, you tend to see this setup where you have two chairs that are out and then two folding chairs that go under the bed or in the closet. And I prefer this. I prefer having chairs that are out already that you don't have to unpack if you have company over. Nice theater seating. They're not electric, so they have little grab handles you pull up to extend it, but I love the fact that they use the side-by-side -side cup holders and not the ones that are front and back. It gives you more room, plus more of an arm space there, and a larger little storage area in between. Nice blackout roller shades. This is something that you're starting to see more and more in the RV industry as standard equipment. I absolutely love when they include these blackout shades. They work really well, especially if you want some additional privacy, or at night, or even in the morning, if you want to block out light from the outside getting into the actual RV. Coming around this way, has a micro microwave, lots of countertop space. Has a three burner cooktop, more cabinet space up top. This has the Magic Chef 12 volt refrigerator. You're starting to see these 12 volt refrigerators become more and more popular in units. And if you don't know if your unit has a 12 volt refrigerator, you can always look at the sticker here and it's probably gonna say DC 12 volt right there. Lots of pantry space. That's also really nice about this unit. You have drawers galore. Pantry space, more pantry space. I do wish they had built shelves in here though. Just because, you know, I think you're gonna have to add them regardless. It's definitely something I think they should have done is maybe put two shelves in each one of these cabinets to be able to hold things that you wanna store in here. You got more drawers right here. You got more drawers right there. You have this large cabinet space right here, which you could easily fit a trash can underneath, which is really nice. You have a stainless steel single basin sink. I prefer the dual basin, but let me know what you guys think. Do you like the single or the dual basin sinks? Coming back, they've already mounted a clock for you. That's cool. Different style interior air conditioning cover as well. This is a Dometic air conditioning system, a lot cleaner than the previous Dometic models, I gotta admit. The previous ones, sometimes with the filter, this little piece right here would bow out. Here are your controls, nice and clean, very tidy, small panel, up and out of the way so you don't have to worry about the little ones accidentally pressing buttons. Taking a look in the bathroom area, very, very nice size shower. You could be easily upwards of six foot five and fit inside of this shower. It's probably two and a half feet deep, about three feet wide. Not your traditional travel trailer shower pan. Nice toilet. It is a plastic toilet, not porcelain. 
you have very, very deep storage here for towels and things like that. You almost think they could have repurposed maybe half of it because to get something back there or out from back there would be kind of difficult. Nice medicine cabinet here. Lots of room around the sink. Coming forward into the main bedroom. I like that they've incorporated drawers. So that's really nice. Typically that's something you don't see. Plus you have space behind there for things that you might want to take out of your pocket, maybe your phone, things like that. And you have charging ports on both sides, both USB and 110. You have some closet space right here. Relatively narrow, maybe 10, 11 inches wide inside. You have some more storage on top and then you have some more storage right here. Now, what's interesting about this is it's almost deep enough to store a washer and dryer. There's absolutely no connections, no power or anything for one, but if they made this maybe three inches deeper and then put power, you could probably put one of those combo unit washer dryers inside of here. Then you have your cable satellite connection plus your power. This is your backer for your TV in the bedroom. And then you have your direct fire air conditioning system. Basically blasts the air directly in here and you control it manually from the knobs on it. Anyways guys, I'd love to know what you think about this floor plan. Again, rear kitchen, mid living room floor plan. This is great for couples. You probably wouldn't be able to fit too many more people unless you opt for like a booth style dinette or you put a jackknife sofa in here. But for a relatively short unit, it is kind of heavy. It's close to 10,000 pounds GVWR. But a lot can be said for what they've put in this unit, especially having a desk. If you are a couple, maybe a couple with a small child and you're traveling around the country and you need a place to work from while you're traveling, having a desk in an RV can be a very convenient and great idea. And this unit's gonna have an MSRP a little north of $45,500. And the sales price on a unit like this is probably gonna be closer to about $32,000. And my recommendation for towing something like this would definitely be at minimum a three quarter ton or a one ton truck. I don't believe you need a diesel engine to tow this though. You know, you could easily get away with a three quarter ton truck with a gas engine. So you get some of that payload capacity back so you can support some of the tongue weight that you're gonna have with a unit that's relatively heavy. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.